Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, so this is the third or second or third installment of my my hack box. Just the components I like to keep on hand with me when it, wherever I'm going. So today, uh, in previous videos, we've gone over the input uh, input devices, my sensors that I like to keep on hand, and the outputs, my motors and LEDs and what have you. So today, uh, we're going to go over sort of the, well, the in-between bits, the parts that make everything, make all the, you know, lights turn on and the motors run and, you know, the, the transistors, the capacitors, and the resistors. So we're going to start off here with the transistors. Now, it's nice and quick. We're going to just go blow right through these. Uh, we got, I got two, two different transistors, and yes, you guys will yell at me, I'm calling a MOSFET a transistor here. I know it isn't. I like to keep on hand just these two, two N-channel type transistors and MOSFETs. So I like to keep on hand these 2N2222A uh, BJT transistors. These are wonderful. I used to use the 3904s because, well, that's uh, what everyone told me to use back when I didn't know anything. And they are, they're wonderful transistors, but they have a lower uh, current capacity than these. So I believe the 2222As are rated for, uh, it's either 0.8 or 1 amp. I can't remember their voltage, but, you know, let's face it, most of the time we're caring about the amperage, the current, not so much the voltage on these smaller projects here. It's mostly going to be 5, maybe 12 volts. The, that'll handle it. And then for larger capacity things, I like to keep these N-channel MOSFETs. Uh, I forget the value specifically, or the not the value, sorry, the model of these specifically, but I will... Make sure to look it up. It's the their FQP something something something. I'll put a uh, I'll put it in the description of the video what these guys are. Between both of these, I can you know more or less let me drive whatever I want. If I need to drive you know LED you know a lot of LEDs or LED strip, I got my my little BJ, BJTs here. And if you know I need to drive relays or motors or what have you. I got my MOSFETs. I keep N channels around. I do have some uh, PNPs. I actually don't even have any P channel MOSFETs, but I do have some PNP trend, uh, BJTs around. I keep them around because they're, you know, occasionally you do need them, but for the most part, the N channel works great for me. That's enough about that. Moving on. So, my capacitors. Now, I'm, you know, about 10 years into working with microcontrollers and, and electronics and what have you and I honestly haven't really had a huge need for capacitors a ton until recently. Some of my projects have gotten a little bit more complex and I've needed actually to filter my power so I do now keep some caps on hand. Here I have these larger caps. I think this is just assorted honestly. I have some 470, 25 volt. I had some 22 microfarads. But yeah, this is just sort of my larger cap assortment. I, you know, I don't often need these, so I only have a couple of them around. This is sort of my assorted baggie. Uh, in here, I got some 22 microfarad at uh, 50 volt. And this handles most filtering applications. I tend to use these on, on uh, power supplies, just, you know, anything where the, you know, it might be a kind of noisy signal. And oftentimes I will also pair it up with, I'll put one of these guys and one of these guys on my, on any basically power supply. So these are 100 nanofarad or point, is it 0.1 or 0.01? 0.1 uh, microfarad. A little ceramic caps, these are both, these are all electrolytic. But yeah, usually if you, if you pair the two of these up, on any, well, any mild power supply where you don't need just a perfect, amazing signal, you just need to clean it up because it's kind of noisy. These will work great, paired up especially. I, I've most recently been using them on, uh, well, we'll go and we'll get into it later on, but the uh, ESP8266s, those microcontrollers, they need real clean power, else they will just reset and. You, these are very useful, so I keep these around. 
So that's my, my capacitors. Last but definitely not least are the resistors that I like to keep on hand. So I keep uh, a good assortment of values. Again, not too many values because this is my, you know, my, my on the go box. I don't need everything, just need what's important. So I keep 220s and 470 ohm uh, resistors around. Those are pretty good, you know, LEDs and you know, your, your current limiting resistors in general. I got 1Ks, I tend, I, honestly I default to 1K for almost everything and pivot between if I need more or less. Then I have 4.7K and 10K. The 10Ks I tend to not need so much, although they do come in handy with certain sensors. So especially as we looked at here, I have this thermistor from an uh, older video, from a different video. And, you know, this is a 10K thermistor, so, you know, I use 10K resistor on it for my voltage divider into the microcontroller, and that gives me the right output to then, you know, deal with and code. And I also tend to use them on, on photo cells as well. So, I, you know, 1K seems to work for me. I have millions of 1K resistors, so for most applications, 1K tends to kind of work, at least in a hacky sort of way. And the, you know, these are great current limiting. I, you know, they're all great current limiting, but, you know, the four, 220 and 470s, those are great for current limiting. 1K is great for most other things. And then I have a couple higher values just in case. So, yeah, that's my sort of my, my in-between crunchy components there. So next video, we will be looking at the power, what I keep in my, my box here for power. And then the final video of at least inside this box, remember, we got way more than that coming up. But we'll go over power in the next video, and then we'll go over sort of my, my, what I keep in here, which are my microcontrollers and programmers. So stay tuned for the next video. See ya.